Hi everyone, and welcome back to Inside Tech. Over the past couple of weeks, Apple re-established itself as one of the best smartphone companies around with the release of the iPhone 11, 11 Pro, and 11 Pro Max. As we saw in the last video, there were a few exciting and innovative improvements, but many of the new features were simply Apple playing catch-up to what Android already offered, Android devices like the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. What we established in the Note 10 Plus review was that it's not only a fantastic Samsung device, but potentially the best Android smartphone on the market. So in this video, we'll be comparing what many believe to be the best iOS and Android devices, covering all of the differences between each phone, and deciding which one offers the best value for money. Let's take a look. First off, we'll take a look at their designs, and I have here the Space Grey and Aura Black models for the most direct comparison as possible. Both phones have a glass sandwich design with metal frames, with Gorilla Glass 6 used in the Note 10 Plus. Apple don't specify the glass used in their phone, but do claim once again to have the strongest glass in any smartphone. Drop tests comparing these two phones are pretty inconclusive, and have shown both phones to be the victor in different situations. There isn't a definitive answer as to which is more durable. The only guaranteed takeaway is that both phones are made of glass, which can shatter if you drop them. One thing I should mention though is that the Note has curved glass on both sides, which wraps around a lot further on the edges than the iPhone. So if you did happen to drop these without a case, there's more chance of the Note landing on its glass panels and breaking. The iPhone does have one surefire durability advantage though, because its metal frame is made from stainless steel, one of only a few smartphones to do so. Stainless steel is much harder than the aluminium found in the Note 10 Plus, so the iPhone will be more scratch resistant. The iPhone is also the more water resistant of the two phones, with protection against submersion up to 4 meters versus 1.5 meters in the Note 10 Plus, awarding iPhone the best water resistance for any smartphone. The iPhone has the power button and SIM card tray on the right hand side, but new for the Note this year is the removal of the power button, which is now integrated into the Bixby button on the left side. Bixby is still just about as useless as Siri, so I quickly remapped the button to open other apps. The customization of the Bixby button is nice, but it's a shame that the Google Assistant still isn't an option here, at least not directly anyway. There's no such button on the iPhone, but it does have the handy mute switch, something I think all phones should have, and I'd probably switch the Note's Bixby button for a mute switch if I could. As a right-handed user, I do prefer having the power button on the right-hand side on the iPhone, and I still don't see any advantage to Samsung removing it, but you soon adjust and it's really not a big issue. Having drastically reduced the speaker grill, Samsung have now placed the speaker on top of the phone, alongside the microphone and SIM card tray. This is a hybrid SIM card tray, which can fit either dual SIMs or SIM and micro SD cards for expandable storage. This is a huge advantage over the iPhone's single SIM card slot, which can only have a dual SIM set up with the eSIM and doesn't offer any expandable storage at all, and I'll touch on this again later on. Since the iPhone does have a full-size top speaker, I did find it easier to hear people during phone calls, who in turn found me easier to hear than on the Note 10 Plus. Phone call performance is an aspect I tend not to focus on in reviews since there are a number of variable factors involved, but since a lot of people have asked me about this, using the phones on the same network the iPhone did generally perform better, but neither phone had any major issues. At the bottom of the phones we have the microphones and speaker grills, the S Pen and the Note 10 Plus, and the USB-C and lightning ports for charging. I had hoped to see USB-C finally introduced to the iPhone this year, especially in a phone that Apple are calling Pro, but it looks like we'll need to wait yet another year. USB-C is much more versatile, and by far the superior connector type, so Samsung definitely wins this one. With no headphone jack in either phone, both phones include wired USB-C and lightning earphones in the box. Neither sound amazing, but I do prefer the AKG earphones, since they have a braided wire cable and an in-ear style design. These are the largest phones that each company offers, with the exception of the Galaxy Fold, and have very similar dimensions. The Note is the taller device, but is also thinner, narrower, and noticeably lighter than the 11 Pro Max. There are two major design differences with the rear panels. First of all, the iPhone now has a frosted glass texture, which I have to say feels really good in the hand, and along with the rounded corners, this makes holding the iPhone much more comfortable than the boxy Note 10 Plus. As beautiful as the Note's glossy finish is, it's a huge fingerprint magnet, which now isn't a problem on the iPhone. The second is of course the camera design. The iPhone was initially met with some criticism of its new triple lens camera module, but it does look much better in real life on the finished models. Having said that, the Note's more traditional camera alignment is arguably more sleek and elegant, so let me know down in the comments section which of these you guys prefer. As for the front displays, there are actually quite a few similarities here, with the same colour range, brightness and contrast ratio in each phone. Samsung's larger 6.8 inch display does have the advantage in screen resolution though, its 1440p display has a much higher pixel density. 
It also supports HDR10+, which the iPhone strangely doesn't, despite also having a peak brightness of 1200 nits. Realistically though, there isn't much content supporting HDR10 Plus yet anyway. Both phones support the more popular HDR10 and Dolby Vision though, so along with Dolby Atmos support, watching movies is fantastic on both phones. The iPhone does have better speakers though, and with the new spatial audio feature, your content is more immersive. The full-sized front speaker grill provides better stereo separation too, and cranking the volume up to max, the sound is louder on the iPhone. You won't be able to hear the spatial audio effect over YouTube, but you should be able to hear the difference in volume. Hi everyone, and welcome back to Inside Tech. Today's video is one of the most highly requested on the channel, and certainly one of the reviews I've been most looking forward to. These are the new WF-1000XM3, the latest model in Sony's true wireless device. When it comes to YouTube content, the Note does have a big advantage. Not only can you watch at 1440p resolution, but you can also watch HDR content, which currently isn't possible on the iPhone. The iPhone beats the Note's display with two features though. The first is True Tone, which automatically adjusts the white balance based on the lighting conditions. The Note 10 Plus does have a blue light filter, but it's not as effective or sophisticated as True Tone. The second is that the iPhone screen is completely flat, which eliminates accidental screen presses when holding the phone, an issue I ran into with the Note 10 Plus. It also means that none of your content is distorted at the edges, which some people prefer. Conversely, the Note 10 Plus is able to achieve razor-thin bezels, much thinner than on the iPhone, so there are advantages to both. The Note's bezels are actually thinner on the top and bottom too, but are perhaps a bit more noticeable in contrast to the thinner side bezels, so some people may prefer the symmetry of the bezels on the iPhone. When watching high dynamic range content, the phones can exceed their typical maximum brightness to reach 1200 nits. You can see here on the Note 10 Plus as I exit an HDR video on YouTube that the display naturally decreases the brightness back to its normal maximum. The iPhone peaks at 800 nits for normal use, and although not specifically stated by Samsung, the Note 10 Plus is thought to be about the same too. These are just the specs on paper though, and I found with general use that the iPhone was noticeably brighter in normal lighting conditions, and also when using the phones in bright sunlight. The most significant visual difference here though, and ultimately what makes the Note my favourite screen of the two, is how each phone handles the front facing camera. I'm not the biggest fan of the centrally placed camera lens, but in my opinion, the hole punch display is much better than the iPhone's large and obtrusive notch. The Note's display is much more modern, and you can tell that the iPhone's notch is a two year old design. The Note consequently has a much higher screen to body ratio, which makes watching movies and gaming more enjoyable. Aside from perhaps the 90Hz refresh rate screens, like the OnePlus 7 Pro, I think that the Note 10 Plus has one of the best looking screens on any smartphone. Of course the reason the iPhone's notch is so large is to house the necessary components for Face ID, which in fairness, is the safest and most sophisticated facial unlocking system on a smartphone. Thanks to iOS 13, Face ID is now even faster, faster than Samsung's Face Unlock, even with faster recognition turned on. The Note's Face Unlock is the convenient, but insecure method that can be fooled by pictures of you, so for a more secure unlock method, it also has an ultrasonic fingerprint scanner. This is embedded beneath the screen, and therefore doesn't obscure the display at all, which is a huge advantage. It's also faster than Face ID, although you do need to place your fingerprint in the exact correct location each time, which can be hard to do with the screen turned off. Muscle memory does help you to get this right most of the time, and of course you could wake the screen first, but then it loses its speed advantage. You also have the problem that dirt or moisture can sometimes stop you from using the scanner, whereas Face ID works essentially every single time. Face ID for me is a much better biometric method overall, but I can see the merits to both systems. The iPhone's big notch is a heavy price to pay for Face ID, and as much as I love it, I would take an under-display fingerprint scanner in order to get rid of the notch and give the iPhone a more modern look with just the front-facing camera on the screen. It's really a choice of the convenience of Face ID, or the better aesthetic of the Note's fingerprint scanner, so let me know which of these two you prefer down in the comments section. Speaking of the front-facing cameras, both lenses have f2.2 apertures, but the iPhone has a slightly higher resolution lens at 12 megapixels versus 10 in the Note 10 Plus. You can see the difference that higher resolution makes in how much sharper and more detailed the image taken on the iPhone is. The Note seems to have smoothed the skin texture, even with beauty mode turned off. The iPhone's colours are also more natural, and although Samsung's image is still very good, it is characteristically a little overexposed. We essentially see the same result for portrait mode too, with a sharper image and more accurate colours from the iPhone. I would say that the Note 10 Plus has the better edge detection though, and if I zoom in on the arm and shoulder here, you can see a much more refined and distinct edge compared to the iPhone. I also like that you have the option to save the previewed image directly to the camera roll on the Note 10 Plus, whereas on the iPhone, this automatically flips the image. For the front facing video, both cameras can record in 4K resolution, but only the iPhone is able to record 4K at 60 frames per second, and is in fact the only smartphone able to do so. The stabilisation is slightly better here too, but especially the dynamic range. 
The picture is nice and bright on the Note 10 Plus, but you can see that the sky is blown out and overexposed. On the iPhone only, you can record slow motion video on the front facing camera. I can't see myself ever using this, and I think the feature is about as useless as the name Slofi is ridiculous. One feature exclusive to the Note 10 Plus is live focus video, allowing you to apply live focus lighting effects whilst recording. This works with both the front and rear cameras, but is more effective on the front camera lens since the auto tracking is more accurate for non-moving subjects. Moving on to the rear cameras, both phones have triple lens camera systems, with main, telephoto and ultra-wide lenses. The Note 10 Plus also has a fourth time of flight camera, used for depth information and 3D mapping. This enables features like the 3D scanning app, but as we saw in my other Note video, this doesn't offer particularly good results. As for the regular cameras, both of these phones produce really crisp and detailed photos, and each camera excels in different situations. The iPhone produced more natural images, whereas the Note 10 Plus tended to overprocess, which had both benefits and drawbacks. In these images here, the colour is much more accurate and true to life on the left, and there's also better dynamic range here, so you can see a lot more detail in the clouds. The Note's photo has this kind of blue hue to it, and the colours are a little oversaturated. I do like how sharp the image is though, and switching over to the telephoto lens, this becomes quite apparent. The contrast is a lot higher too, so the picture really pops and stands out. With the ultra-wide lens though, the 11 Pro Max really stood out with how well it maintained consistency with its other lenses. The iPhone processes multiple images from each lens before you even press the shutter, optimising the colour and lighting so that you get a better consistency across all three lenses. Comparing this to the Note 10 Plus, there's a noticeable difference with its wide and other two lenses. Colour accuracy is one of the iPhone's greatest strengths, and although I love the vibrancy of the leaves with the Note's picture here, it's not as true to life as the iPhone. Zooming into 200%, you can also see a higher level of detail retained with the iPhone, and a lot of this is down to how well the iPhone handles dynamic range. The range of exposure from bright highlights to dark shadows allows the camera to retain higher levels of detail, and zooming out to the ultra-wide lens, you can see how the clouds in the background have more definition than with the Note 10 Plus. Again though, you can see the Note's higher contrast which makes the tree stand out in its environment, and this extra processing can sometimes be a benefit. This picture of the plant here, for example, is really striking and much sharper on the Note 10 Plus even if the colour is not as accurate as on the 11 Pro Max. The image quality on both phones is fantastic, and the average consumer should be happy with either phone. I think a lot of people might like the Note's photos, since these can often appear a little more striking straight out of the camera. The Note processes the images to increase the contrast, sharpness and exposure, as though it's adding some light edits to your photos automatically. As we've seen though, this can often lead to oversaturated and unnatural looking photos, and the 11 Pro Max captures more true-to-life images. Apple have really stepped it up this year, and professionals will want to look to the iPhone's arguably superior camera for more realistic images with higher colour accuracy and dynamic range. New for both phones this year is a dedicated night mode. The way the phones process low light images can be quite different, but there are definitely benefits to both. In these photos, I like how much extra detail is revealed in the shadows on the right. A higher exposure in the shadows is actually a common theme with night mode on the Note 10 Plus, which can rescue detail that would otherwise be lost. However, you can see that the colours are a little oversaturated, especially in the dog's fur and the grass, which appear much more natural and lifelike on the left. The iPhone's photo has better dynamic range, so the dog is really well exposed, but the shadows are as dark as they appeared in real life. Here you can see again the higher shadow exposure with the Note 10 Plus, revealing more detail with the building in the background. The restaurant sign does have this unnatural glow around it though, and the text consequently seems a bit blurry compared to the photo on the left. Again, the iPhone is showing better dynamic range. The same effect is happening with this neon sign here, but in this instance, I actually think it works better for the Note 10 Plus, since the sign now appears more legible. The iPhone's better colour accuracy is evident here with this red post box, which has lost its colour with the Note's image processing. If I crop in on the images here, you can see the extra detail captured on the 11 Pro Max too, and in general, I do think that the iPhone's better dynamic range, colour and detail offered better night mode performance overall. The night mode results can vary depending on the subjects and lighting conditions, and each phone succeeds in different situations. With these pictures here, it's the note that actually has the better dynamic range, and you can see how the highlights are blown out in the brickwork on the iPhone. In general, I think that night mode works best to enhance photos that already have some light sources, as opposed to being used in really dark conditions. This way, your images can retain their sharpness and clarity, but still enhance the highlights and bring a bit more detail into the shadows. If you do want to take pictures in near pitch black conditions, you can see that both phones still do a good job of exposing the image in photo mode, but switching over to night mode, the iPhone blows the galaxy away since you can take much longer exposures. Not only is the image brighter, but it doesn't have all the noise you can see in the image on the right. The Note does have an advantage in two areas though. 
First of all, its night mode works even when using the ultra-wide lens, whereas this doesn't on the iPhone. These images show you just how dark the conditions really were in the previous photos, which highlights just how good the iPhone's night mode is. Night mode doesn't work particularly well on the Note's ultra-wide lens, but at least it's an option for you. The second advantage is that you can enable it manually, whereas the iPhone will automatically offer this option based on the lighting conditions. Generally, night mode on the iPhone does display only when appropriate, and even in low light, the normal photo mode actually takes pretty decent photos, but it's definitely a huge benefit to have manual control over this on the Note 10 Plus. Overall, I do like the extra detail that the Note's night mode brings out in the shadows, which often means that it takes a more useful picture than the iPhone. Unfortunately, it often overexposes to do so, and generates a lot of unwanted noise. The Note often struggled with autofocus too, and the iPhone's night mode offers better dynamic range and colour accuracy, so Apple takes the win here. It's easy to conclude that these phones have two of the best cameras you'll find on a smartphone, but Apple have really stepped it up this year, and I think the iPhone has the edge over the Note 10 Plus. Whilst the iPhone may be the better picture taker overall, what I love about the Note 10 Plus is that the camera app is so much more comprehensive. Features like the scene optimizer, a floating shutter button, and a dedicated pro mode give you so much more control, and you need third-party apps to do this on an iPhone. When it comes to recording video though, there's simply only one winner. The iPhone has been the industry leader in video recording for many years, and this is easily still true today. Both phones can record in 4K 60 resolution, but the bitrate is much higher with the iPhones, and the cinematic stabilisation really outperforms Samsung too. The Note 10 Plus has a dedicated super steady mode, but even the iPhone's regular video is more stable than this. Since super steady is locked to 1080p 30, I matched the resolution on the iPhone, and the results gave smoother footage on the 11 Pro Max. Unfortunately, the Note super steady also seems to oversaturate the colour too. Recording video in low light conditions is also very grainy on the Note 10 Plus, even though the main lens has a wider f1.5 aperture. The Note does have a few extra video recording features though, the first of which is Super Slow Mo, for 960 frames per second video at 720p resolution. Both phones can record slow motion video in 1080p at up to 240 frames per second, but the Note Super Slow Mo takes this even further. Sadly, you can only record less than a second of video at a time, so it can be extremely difficult to get the shot you need, as the resolution is often too low to get any usable footage. The Note can also record HDR10 Plus video at 1080p 30, which you can then watch back natively on the phone's display. I don't think that this format will be useful very often, but it's still an added benefit of the Note over the iPhone. This year, the video editors have been improved on both phones, introducing new tools for cropping, adding filters, as well as colour and light adjustments. This is a bit more comprehensive on the iPhone, but more enjoyable to navigate on the Note 10 Plus thanks to the S Pen. Nothing comes close to the precision offered with the S Pen, and for applications like editing photos and video, and even basic tasks like navigating menus, the S Pen made this so much easier. Those of you familiar with the S Pen will know just how useful it can be, as new features like handwriting to text conversion have made it an essential tool for productivity. There are also new features like AR Doodle and Air Gestures which add a bit of fun and creativity too, but I can't say that I ever really use either of these. Now that phone screens are so large, it's hard to use these as one-handed devices, so the S Pen offers a handy and more comfortable way to interact with the phone, and I found myself using it a lot more than in previous years. Not everyone wants or needs a stylus, but it's definitely an advantage over the iPhone, and I really wish that Apple Pencil was supported on the 11 Pro Max. In recent years, Samsung have blown Apple out of the water when it comes to battery life, but the huge battery life gains with the 11 Pro Max have allowed the iPhone not only to catch up, but even overtake the Note 10 Plus. I was getting a decent 10 hours of screen on time with the Note 10 Plus, but around 1.5 hours extra with the 11 Pro Max. The Note does actually have a slightly larger battery inside, but the iPhone's battery optimizations, thanks to the A13 chip and some new software improvements give it an edge when it comes to efficiency. When it comes to charging though, the Note easily has the advantage. The Note 10 Plus can be fast charged at 45 watt speeds, compared to just 18 watts with the iPhone. You'll need to buy this charger separately though, since only a 25 watt charger comes bundled with the phone. For the first time ever, the 11 Pro Max finally comes bundled with a fast charger too, and using these included chargers, the iPhone can be fully charged in 2 hours, but the Note in just 1 hour. The Note can also be wirelessly charged at faster speeds too, with 15 watt charging support, although you'll currently only get this with Samsung's own wireless charger, so you'll probably get just 10 watt speeds with most other chargers. It also has support for reverse wireless charging, allowing you to charge up devices by placing them on the back of the phone. You can actually charge up other devices here at faster speeds than the iPhone can be wirelessly charged, so Apple is clearly behind here. Reverse wireless charging is a feature that in my last iPhone vs Galaxy video, I claimed I wished the iPhone had, but in the 6 months since that video was published, I haven't actually needed or used the feature at all with my S10 Plus. Going forwards, I can't imagine I'll be using it in the Note 10 Plus either, 
but in emergency situations, it's still nice knowing that it could help me out. Taking a look at performance now, the 11 Pro Max features Apple's new A13 Bionic chip, whilst the Note 10 Plus has either the Snapdragon 855 or the Exynos 9825. In terms of raw performance, the A13 is the more powerful chip of the two, and in fact is the most powerful chip you'll find in a smartphone. The Geekbench scores reflect this result too, for both the CPU and the GPU, but you shouldn't place too much weight on this, since the differences in the OS largely negate these results, and you'll get really snappy and responsive performance from both phones. For those into mobile gaming though, you can expect slightly better performance with the iPhone and a wider choice of better optimised apps on iOS. However, gaming is more immersive on the Note 10 Plus because of its larger edge-to-edge -edge display, so both phones make good options here. When it comes to memory though, Samsung outperforms Apple with 12GB of RAM versus just 4GB in the iPhone. Now this difference isn't quite as extreme as it first appears, since iOS is better optimised for lower RAM, so I'd probably equate the iPhone's 4GB to perhaps 8-10 to in an Android device. Still, the Note 10 Plus does offer much better performance when it comes to RAM, and you'll notice this when keeping multiple apps open in the background, or when multitasking with many apps open at once. I really think Apple should have increased the RAM to at least 6GB on the 11 Pro Max, because 4 just isn't very pro at all. Multitasking is actually one of my favourite features of the Note 10 Plus, and gives it a huge advantage over the iPhone when it comes to productivity, since on the iPhone you can only have one app open at a time. Both of these phones have the power to function as your computer, and with such a large screen size, desktop style multitasking is made really easy by the Note 10 Plus, especially with the S Pen. You can take this experience one step further with Samsung DeX, literally allowing you to plug your Note into a PC or MacBook and to use your phone as a desktop. This makes file management extremely easy, and it just seems bizarre to me that I can connect my Note to my MacBook but not to my iPhone. Storage is another area where the Galaxy blows the iPhone away. Not only does it use the fast UFS3 storage, but it also has four times the storage capacity in the baseline model. As I've said before, cloud storage is now pretty cheap and readily available, but there's simply no excuse for Apple not to have increased the base storage from a measly 64GB, especially in a phone they're calling Pro. Don't forget that the Note 10 Plus has expandable storage too, so you can take this even further with a microSD card. When it comes to connectivity, both phones offer the latest Wi-Fi 6, but each offers their own unique data transfer technologies. The 11 Pro Max has Apple's U1 chip, which uses ultra-wideband technology for spatial awareness. The technology is yet to be fully explored, but so far you'll be able to take advantage of precise file sharing through AirDrop simply by pointing your phone at another device. The Note 10 Plus on the other hand offers a 5G version of their phone. 5G technology isn't quite ready yet, so it's essentially pointless to buy the 5G version now. It'll take at least a couple of years for the network to be up and running with decent coverage, but for those who would hang onto their phone for 5 or more years, it might be worth the early investment. The performance and hardware differences are very similar with these two phones, and just as in previous years, the overall experience is largely dictated by the phone's OS. The same benefits and drawbacks of each are mostly unchanged, with iOS generally offering a simpler and more fluid user experience. Gestures are smoother, exclusive apps like iMessage, FaceTime and Notes are still excellent, and the integration with other products in Apple's ecosystem is best in class. The advantage of Apple designing its own processes and software is that there's a level of integration and optimization that Android phones can't compete with. On the Note 10 Plus, however, the level of customization offered by Android completely outshines the iPhone. The vast array of custom themes, settings, and aesthetic options lets you tweak your device to give you a more personalized experience. Even something simple like hiding your apps in an app drawer is still not possible on iPhone, nor is even a basic level of multitasking. The Note 10 Plus lets you take advantage of that huge screen real estate to do much more on your phone at one time, and along with the S Pen, the Note 10 Plus is clearly the superior device for productivity. The Note 10 Plus would also be my go-to device for playing music, since it supports low-latency Bluetooth codecs like Aptex and LDAC. In a world of wireless earphones and speakers, this really gives the Note an edge over the iPhone. It also supports instant pairing by NFC, which is extremely handy, especially when you have multiple NFC devices. You'd need an entire video dedicated to all the differences in software, but whilst iOS is extremely well optimised on the iPhone, there's no question that Android lets you do more. There are really strong arguments for both, and I don't think that either is necessarily better, it's just going to come down to personal preference as to which you enjoy more. One thing you might want to consider about the OS though, is software support. Not only are day one updates guaranteed on iPhone, but the latest versions of iOS are supported across many older devices, even dating back five generations of the iPhone. With the Note 10 Plus, you'll have to wait to receive the latest Android software, since Google will first prioritise its own devices like the new Pixel 4, and you won't receive support for the latest software for as many years as you would on iPhone. So if you want the latest update straight away, or plan to keep your phone for many years, you'll have better support on the iPhone. So we finally arrive at the very last thing to consider before buying these phones, and that's the price. 
The baseline models for each of these phones is $1,099, and the prices then increase as you upgrade the storage. Don't forget that the baseline 11 Pro Max has just 64GB of storage, whereas this is 256 with the Note 10 Plus. To get this storage on the iPhone, you'd need to spend an extra $150. UK customers will notice a much more substantial difference in price, and while Samsung factors in the conversion rate for their UK pricing, you'll actually find that the iPhone costs even more in pounds than it does in dollars, and you may see similar results in other regions too. Both of these phones are available in cheaper, smaller versions too, and with the iPhone, this is essentially what you get. The battery life and screen size are the only differences between the Pro and Pro Max, so it's a lot easier to make a decision on which sized phone you'd prefer. The Galaxy Note 10 on the other hand is a very different phone from the Plus model. It has poorer specs and fewer features, like its 1080p display and lack of expandable storage, but I discussed this fully in my Note review. As a quick side note, I think Samsung's S10 Plus deserves a mention here too, since in some areas it actually outperforms the Note 10 Plus. As we saw in my comparison video, it has better front-facing cameras, still has a headphone jack, and is the better value device overall. With all specs and features considered though, the Note 10 Plus is still Samsung's highest end phone as the most direct competitor to Apple's iPhone 11 Pro Max. Apple's iPhone 11 is similarly a better value device than the Pro model, so those on a budget may wish to consider one of those cheaper models instead. Overall, the iPhone 11 Pro Max is the best iPhone money can buy, and a strong argument could be made for the Galaxy Note 10 Plus being the best phone on Android. If you wanted to sum up the major differences between these phones, then the iPhone offers superior cameras, battery life, and a simple interface on iOS. The Note 10 Plus is much better for productivity, has an abundance of features, and offers complete customization on Android. Which device you think is better will depend on which factors you prioritize, and probably whether you prefer iOS or Android. I personally couldn't pick a winner, but what's clear to me is that the Note 10 Plus offers better value for your money. But what do you guys think about these phones? Let me know in the comments section which one you think is better, and if you think these are the best phones on the market. If you found this video helpful, then please give it a thumbs up to show your support, and make sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on so that you don't miss anything else. I'll do my best to respond to your comments on here, but send in your questions on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram where I'll definitely be able to get back to you. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.